here. Today, I'll be covering a game from a series right, that's okay. very special to me. But much like the nice girl you knew back in high school, she eventually went broke, destitute, and sold herself off to the... Oh, sorry. I'm talking about Heroes of Might and Magic 5, released in 2006 by Ubisoft. So, what happened? How did we get here? Well, Freedio, Ubisoft. who had the license for Might and Magic, went bankrupt. So, Ubisoft bought the license, gave it to Naval, a sweatshop developer located in the Siberian gulags, and asked them to make a game as quickly as possible with no regard for human life. And since Slavs are trained from birth to play Heroes 3 on a competitive level, the developers were a good choice for developing a successor to the series. Unfortunately, the demands of a sweatshop took their toll, and by the end of it, most of the development staff were either dead or missing. The lead programmer got mauled by a bear while picking berries in the forest. Two of the artistic leads fell down a well and kept falling, and the designer got kidnapped by a gargoyle. Now, I what know what you're thinking, fuck is and yes, this with? is entirely true. I even wrote an entire wiki article to prove it. Despite such hardships, Naval did manage to make a beautiful and pretty interesting game. Let's begin. Story. Heroes 5 takes place in the world of Ashan, which has no connection to Heroes 3, 4, or the rest of the Might and Magic franchise, because we get a much more interesting and non-generic setting instead. Here's a quick rundown of this compelling story. Ashan is is under attack by demons. Your husband, the king, is killed by demons. You are now queen. You resurrect your dead husband. Then you kill your undead husband. You get kidnapped by demons. Then everyone kills the demons. And everyone lives happily ever after in the Pony Kingdom of Equestria, Friendship is magic. You might think I'm Happy lying about that last part. Guess what? I'm not. What an engaging, engrossing plot. But what would you expect from the lead writer of such prestigious titles such as My Horse and Me 2 and the celebrated cult classic Horses? Thank you, Jeff Spock. Thank you for your service to humanity. You know what? I'm going to quickly rewrite the story of Heroes 5 into something much more coherent. Spasmaticus, a young king on a mad quest to rule the world. And then I wanted to watch one episode of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! for uh, to learn about art styles and stuff. She likes to draw. Uh, for her game and shit and it was the first time I ever watched an episode of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! How is it so bad? How did this become so big when it's so bad? It, it was absolutely terrible and it made no sense whatsoever anything in the first episode it was like ridiculously bad why does his voice sound so deep when he's dueling and then he's like it li it's like he enters puberty when he's when he's dueling i don't i don't understand what the fuck is happening <laughs> why is that why does his voice become so deep like super deep he's possessed while dueling so none of his wins are his achievement or what Makes sense. Gameplay. Everything is turn-based. Pick a map, pick a faction, pick a hero, and play. Unlike Heroes 3, your heroes can now attack monsters directly. But unlike Heroes 4, they can't be murdered on the battlefield. And they get a crazy, over-the-top skill wheel progression system as they level up, which is never explained inside the game, and you have to use third-party fan software to even know the existence of such a thing. Oh yeah, and you what? no longer have to micromanage every single neutral dwelling in town. You can now send caravans to the town of your choice and just pick up your troops later. It's very self-explanatory. There's eight different factions to play. Six in the base game, plus fortress and stronghold from the expansions. Everybody gets a massively scaled town, which spits out units for them each week. Every town also gets an amazing orchestral theme song, except stronghold. Each time I reinstall the game, I have to realize this all over again. Stronghold's music sounds like some royalty-free ambient background noise. It's 
sounds like elevator music in a fantasy-themed two-star hotel. So each time I have to go into my music folders and replace it with something more appropriate. Ram Ranch, it rocks. Cowboys love big herds driving cocks. As you may have noticed, the town camera pans around on its own. It's actually one of my favorite things in this game, especially since the camera tracking syncs up with the music. But I'll show that off at the end. Every faction gets seven units from tier one to tier seven, all of which can be upgraded. Tribes of the East adds side grades too, which means there's now two upgrades to choose from. Most of these range from interesting to what flavor of energy drink do you want your units to look like? Let's talk about the factions. Haven. These are the humans. They're very standard, very European, and generally quite solid. Some might think the strongest unit in the Haven arsenal is the Angel. However, that's completely fucking wrong. Yes, a celestial being sent to enact the will of God is pretty good, but um... Can she pay taxes? I don't think so. No, the strongest unit under Haven's direct command is the humble peasant. The real heroes of might and magic are taxpayers. They contribute their monthly wages to provide you with security, social services, and of course, roads. Without peasants, we wouldn't have much of a country. Yes, it's only one gold per peasant per day, but if you let them survive plague, famines, and high infant mortality rates, you'll win the game economically. Because wars, aren't decided by swords. They're decided by whoever has the most money. And that's a fact. God bless the unwashed masses for sustaining the military industrial complex of the Griffin Empire. Stronghold. They've got orcs, centaurs, wyverns, and women. They also get a cyclops eventually. Unfortunately, they also have yep. goblins. I have mixed feelings about these little shits. No. If you understand, let me read you one of their abilities. Treachery. When the number of these creatures falls below 30 percent of their original numbers they change sides luckily the rest of the faction more or less acknowledges that goblins are so human trash which is great since you can sacrifice them directly to your shaman girls use them as a tasty snack or even as improvised living ammunition for your cyclops it's an okay faction a bit barren and of course their music is terrible but that's okay because i replaced all the strong music 28 us marines pulling up with black Four Raptor trucks, helicopters landed. Ram Ranch is under siege. Under lockdown. Wait, what the fuck is this really makes? Marines are gonna fuck Ram Ranch cowboy butts. Much more immersive. Uh, how and how have I never heard that one? Their city is essentially just Dubai, except in the sky, floating at an altitude just high enough to be legally recognized as an independent state. As such, academies are regarded as offshore tax havens. What do they do with all this money? Well, they do what everyone with infinite power and knowledge of the arcane does. They summon cat girls and construct tin cans to murder anybody they don't like. They're great to play, and they've got amazing visuals. It's like a fusion of Indian and Arabic aesthetics. I love it. Sylvans are furries, sodomites, and probably zoophiles. Critics are rather divided on this town. On the one hand, it's objectively the best choice to upgrade your Apple Jackson to Fluttershy. Yet, many might be blindsided by Princess Celestia's better synergy with light magic. Personally, I... I, I don't care. They do have really nice music though. Dungeon are furries, sodomites, and definitely zoophiles. If you like femdom, BDSM, or matriarchy, you'll feel right at home in the dungeon. They're fun to play. My only criticism is that it's kind of hard to tell if your units are upgraded or not, since the only difference between a normal dark elf and the upgraded version is whether or not they have this queen of spades tattoo on their backside. I don't know what that's about. Necropolis gets skeletons, spellies skellies and big bone skellies. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but each time I play Necropolis, I do get a very strong, inexplicable craving to consume monster energy. As expected, they can raise the dead. Originally, after sitting around in their castle and smacking the end turn button for a few months, Necropolis would automatically win. Of course, this was incredibly fun, and since the hero's community hates fun, it was nerfed into what the ground. What the now need gamer juice to raise the dead. Uh, a limited resource but happy birthday I'm scared this is dangerous I'm scared there's a knife right here at my throat flashback don't put it in your face what the fuck I'm not it's at least three happy centimeters away birthday to you. 
Is this is this dime dime cake? Toblerone. Toblerone. They didn't have dime, but it's the same brand. Toblerone and dime is the same brand. The cake is made by the same brand. I don't know if it's hot. Yeah, it's very hot actually. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not American. Should I have it on a plate or should I? Welcome to Uganda. This is an ice cream cake, is it? Wait, I, did you see Peppa's reaction to the candles? Yeah. Was it was it funny? Yeah. Fuck, I missed <laughs> it. I didn't think about it. All right. You want? Yeah. This? Mm -hmm. No, oh, so too much. Uh, you're too skinny. Here we go. Whoop. All right. Uh huh. Okay, then it's mine, I guess. Thank you, chat. Oh, oh you. You're so silly. Thank you very much, uh, Spoon. I bring. Okay. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, darling. <clears throat> Dan the Dank Dan. Soup Soup. Fidelta. Thank you, boys. Pochi. Thank you for two years, man. Big Daddy Strokes. Troke. Lol. Warpus. Devil Scyther. Biosub. The Rolling Fridge. Tiger Fierce. Momo Woods. Phenolum. HG. Diggy. And Root Pig. Shinris. Thank you. Sorry if I missed a shit ton of subs today. My bad. I was um, distracted by your pretty mom's butt. Still have a fucking spoon. Welcome to Uganda. <clears throat> Thank you, Sean. Let's see. Let's taste this ass. No, oh, not bad. Not bad, chat. Welcome to Uganda. I'm not a big fan of Toblerone, but. This tastes pretty good. It's very good. Yeah. I like it a lot. Not bad. Only replenishes at the start of each week. Fortress is the Manlet faction, which might not sound very Manlet faction. But they also get runes, which allow the dwarves to, among other things, cover the entire length of the battlefield, resurrect their dead stacks, and temporarily become a ghost. If that wasn't enough, three of their strongest units might also be completely immune to Armageddon. And based off what you've just heard, yes, they are incredibly balanced. Inferno can do this. They can also do this. They're red, they're demons, they can summon more demons. They all look the same, and they're extremely boring to play. But wait, that's not all. This is a good time to mention that every faction gets a special, racially exclusive ability. Academy gets body modification. Sylvans are good at poaching. Dungeon benefits from bestiality. Dwarves get runes. Stronghold gets angry. Haven can turn living units into better units. Necropolis can turn living units into undead units. But Inferno has the most powerful and strategically significant of all. Inferno can turn living units into dead units. Now that is amazing design. So while other brainlet factions are focused on pressing the advantage, what? adapting to the enemy, and increasing their forces, the Galaxy Brain Inferno player spends all of his money on troops only to sacrifice them so he can level up once or twice. His objective completed, his goals met, he hits Alt F4 and ejects himself from the multiplayer match. And that's why Inferno is the most powerful faction, because its players can't be reasoned with. They're nihilists, with motives above human understanding. Combat plays out like the previous titles, except there are some changes. One, everyone has gained weight since Heroes 3 and 4. The battlefield is no longer hexagonal. This video is now too quadragonal. Kiss her, right? Everything and everyone is a square now. It's easier to body block, but it's also Not easier there. to get completely blocked out of a fight, depending Just on wanted. the unfortunate Just geometry mine. of twigs and small stones. Two, the shirt, whiskey. 
Okay, bear. That determine how quickly you Stomach move. Right speed now. and initiative. Speed is how far your units can move. Initiative is how quickly they decide to do something. Free. I have no idea what they did with the spells. Sure, there's destructive magic, which still includes the classic nuclear option, and there's vampirism, which, by the way, is really funny to put in a vampire. But is this game way more complicated than Hero Street? Make you quicker. Slow like doesn't actually make you slow. They just make you act quicker or slower, respectively. Hello? What happened to my goddamn magic? But I'm willing to forgive all that, because Heroes 5 added the best goddamn spell in the game. Probably the best spell in the entire Heroes series. Summon Beehive. I love this spell so much, I even made my own campaign around it. It's called Beekeeper. It's a piece of shit. Don't actually play it. If you kill the last monster, you win the game, but I made it so that about a thousand text boxes will pop up when you do, which uh, consists of the entire B-movie script. Multiplayer. Multiplayer is dead. Ubisoft <laughs> doesn't maintain anything, but you can still use virtual land to play with friends. There's simultaneous turns to make normal games faster and a dual option for instant combat. So most of the time, you're going to be up against the AI, which is AI in name alone. Computer players may be artificial, but they're definitely not intelligent. But that doesn't mean they don't have chess master level programming behind them. The AI takes about 10 seconds of raw processing power each turn to carry out their master plan of leaving their base undefended when your army is right at their doorstep. This only gets worse with more AI because each one must independently take 10 seconds of your lifespan to calculate their next move. It actually got so ridiculous that I had to use Cheat Engine to speed hack the game about 5-6 times. What a convoluted solution, Seth. Why didn't you just alt-tab and do something else? Well, because alt-tabbing makes this game freeze. That's right. Heroes 5 pauses itself so you don't have to miss a second of watching that turn timer fill up. For that reason, I recommend trying Heroes 5.5, a mod that drastically rewrites the AI to be more intelligent and to take turns lightning fast. By the way, the base game hates my graphics card. So if your game looks like this, then I also recommend Heroes 5.5. Finally, there's a map editor included with this game. You can make some pretty good maps with it. Mainly, however, I use it to make trash like this. Final score. I've received a lot of feedback that my review scores are poorly defined and hardly objective. Let's fix that up right now. The final score will be composed of a single industry standard metric by which all games are professionally judged. The main menu. I'm going to be assessing these per expansion. Base game. Very solid. Very cool. Anime fight sequence. 10 out of 10. Hammers of fate. Just some dark elves trying and failing to illegally cross the border. 5 out of 10. Tribes of the East. An amazing high impact sequence where a cyclops lays siege to a castle. <sighs> whacking and smacking every human in his path. But just then, a crossbowman ah, raves and shoots the cyclops. Now, I'm <clears> gonna <throat> ask the audience, what do you think he does next? Logically, there's only two options. He can A, chill at the back, reload, and take a Jaw second lock. shot in relative safety. Or B, he can charge the Cyclops with a butter knife. If you voted B, good news, you're correct. Our brave warrior follows the most reasonable course of action and charges the Cyclops. Let's see how well he does. He didn't fly Wait. so good. Zero out of 10. Based on these scores, I conclusively give Heroes 5 a out of 10. Heroes 5 is a fantastic addition to the series and probably the last good game it will ever have. Since I'm fully convinced that Heroes 6 and 7 don't actually exist, I'm just having a bad dream. One that I can't seem to wake up from. The big question is, is it as good as Heroes 3? Probably not, but it's a solid game in its own right and does justice to the source material. And if you don't believe me, believe the genuine words of other reviewers, such as Stephanie here, who wrote, Love, five stars. My neighbor's mother-in-law makes $61 every hour on the internet. She has been without a job for seven months, but last month her pay was $14,324 just working on the internet for a few hours. Read this post here, equal, 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 and G. 
T, semicolon, who are definitely real people and uh, not spam bots trying to take your money. I recommend buying the whole collection on GOG, since unlike the Uplay copy, it comes with a full soundtrack and no DRM. Plus, it ensures that less of your money is going towards Ubisoft, who massacred my favorite series, turned it into someone's deviant art gallery, and turned me into a bitter shell of my former self. As always, more content to come next year. We're done for now, but not entirely. Earlier, I concluded my streaming contract with DLive, and as a man of my word, I went back to the merchants and asked them to vote on what kind of smut would you like commissioned. Our budget? About $1,200. Here are the results of democracy. You can find them on my site and spread across the less reputable dens of evil. A warm thanks to the, the many fuck? members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. Please enjoy your Christmas, Hanukkah, and have a happy- Your Christmas, Hanukkah! Just loop it up. Yes. Sup, 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 sup